to start a uh, call to order policies and priorities committee meeting Monday, March 11th, 2019. Uh, we'll have the agenda recommendation, please. Councilor Norbury. Um, that the Monday, March 11th, 2019 policies and priorities committee meeting agenda be approved as presented. Seconder. Councilor Majinski. All in favor? <coughs> Carried. Thank you. Adoption of minutes. Uh, February 11th, PMP committee meeting minutes. Recommendation, please. Councilor Lehman. <laughs> that the Monday, February 11th, 2019 policies and priorities committee meeting minutes are adopted as presented. Second for Councilor Krakowka. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. <clears throat> I like this. Everyone's on the one side. I don't get an X or it. It's good. Uh, no business arising from the minutes. Are there any business? Staff? No business. Okay. Petitions and delegations. No cor or sorry, correspondence. 6.1, Neil Meck. Outdoor rink. Correspondence from Mr. Neil Meck dated February 20th, 2019. Requesting an outdoor rink for Tumbler Ridge. Recommendation, please. Councilor Norbury. Uh, for discussion. Seconder. Council Majinski, all in favor. Carry. Open for discussion. Yeah, I'll. I'll yep. Council Norbury. Sorry. Absolutely. Um, and I'll speak to this. Um, so, you know, I'm not super involved in hockey. I'm very interested in uh, making sure that our community has the adequate ice time required for you know, recreational sports use. Um, but is do. From my understanding, we could be making better usage of our um, our existing facilities. Isn't isn't that true? I mean, do you think there's a way that we can um, look at options to better utilize our um, ice ice facilities? I mean, there's there is definitely opportunity to increase utilization there. However, we kind of leave it upon the residents to to book an ice time slot if they want to use it. Whereas an outdoor rink is open all the time. Um, you know, it, it's, um, the residents don't have the opportunity in the rink, in, in the arena, to use it on the weekends like they would an outdoor rink, for sure. Uh, Councilor Kalka? Yeah, I just, <clears throat> wanna, I mean, I believe we've had an outdoor rink down at the um, driving range. Uh, I believe this year we didn't have one installed, but in the previous years we have. Um, count or the district's got a heated uh, skate shot down there to put skates on or whatever. So I'd be curious. I mean, I don't believe it was in this year, but I know the previous years it was. I'd be curious how much it's getting used. I mean, maybe it's the location isn't uh, the right location maybe for it, for people getting down there, uh, whether people are working, children want to use it. There's not a way to get down there, but I mean, there is an outdoor rink down there. There's no boards on it, but... <clears throat> Yeah, and it, it was used in the past, and it, it uh, has been used, and, and I think that outdoor, uh, or sorry, warm-up shack um, is in a position to accommodate the sledders as well, like the tobogganers. They use that hill there too. So, Mr. Wall, is there any reason, or rhyme or reason, why the, the outdoor rink wasn't installed this year, Mr. Wall? Yeah, just for the maintenance cost that we were incurring on it, it's not used very much to almost at all and the letter that uh, mr mech has sent in he's looking for a nice surface that can be used for hockey practices uh, that surface wouldn't accomplish that uh, you need something that would be able to put up in that right there's a, i would say that if council wants to move forward with the type of resources that are going to be involved in putting out an outdoor rink we certainly can it's going to be expensive um, for sure uh, i wouldn't be I wouldn't rely on the community to make to do the maintenance. I, I would say we have to maintain it ourselves. But there are we've taken a number of steps to try and increase the utilization of the rink that we have. So the block booking for minor hockey and figure skating. That uh, these these type of strategies can be increased. Um, our weeknights are for the most part filled, but our weekends are largely unless there's a hockey tournament, the ice will sit for the weekend unused. Uh, the mornings here are unused. We could look at different pricing structure for weekends and mornings. 
um, we could open up the rink so that you can do, like you said, if the ice is not being used, um, just go on and, and hop on until somebody uh, goes off. We don't need to have supervised public skating. We can have um, notices put up to do it. I talked to Fort Nelson, they do something similar. Uh, they put the, even put the rules up there that if nobody's on the ice, you can go on there with your hockey equipment and hockey sticks just if somebody wants to come on there. Or if there are other people on, then you can't use uh, hockey sticks and hockey pucks. Uh, I think that there are further steps we can do to encourage you guys to have before we start adding capacity. Because I don't think um, we're really just talking about maybe some of the kids would like an extra time on hockey practice in the hour they get on the Wednesdays and Thursdays. But it's the those alternating figure skating times are the only times when it's booked. Mm -hmm. the, the weekends are pretty much open all year. Right. So I know in Clearview they have a community rink there that is pretty much open all the time. And the school is right beside, so at lunchtime the kids eat their lunch and then they go and put their skates on for 20 minutes and go skate at the rink. No charge. So, I mean, there's definitely areas where we could look at improving the utilization or making it more accommodating for residents but um, I, I do think that we do need to look at an outdoor rink um, I grew up with it as well and it's um, it, it, it not only helps hockey players it helps people get out and do something for activity um, you know, not everybody's a hockey player, but a lot of Canadians know how to skate, and, and a lot of Canadians know or enjoy skating, just skating. Like even an oval track, when we had the oval track down at the golf course, um, I think that was an important feature as well. But I think what um, Mr. Mech is, is talking about is, is us investing in boards and, and making an actual uh, rink with boards outside. And realistically, I think the best place for it would be in the downtown area. Um, just because then the whole town can access it easily instead of at the golf course. There is access issues there. And not a lot of parents are willing to let their kids go by themselves to walk down to the golf course. It is a bit far. So um, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Councilor Majinski. Thank you, Mary Bertrand. Is there a booking schedule for the current arena uh, for the public to know, like if they can see when, like is there a matrix of where there's open free time so that they can view at all, any time? Or? There is there is an ICE user mm -hmm. schedule. I don't know how public that is. You can go online if you register for the EREC program. You can go online and check the availability of any of our facilities. So mm -hmm. it's updated continuously. If somebody, like let's say you're on there, and just five minutes before somebody booked a block of ice, that'll be on their own. So you can go through and, and check. Then you can do that with our other facilities as well. Councilman Majinski. I think that might be just something to arise for just to have the public know and be more informed on before we kind of consider putting in uh, boards into an outdoor rink. Mm -hmm. um, can I just touch one more base on outdoor? Yep. Um, our temperatures here <clears throat> they always are fluctuating, so I can see why putting it out, say, in the tennis course or down at the golf uh, uh, driving range, down the golf course, there's not going to be a lot of thick ice there, so that it's going to maintain a cold temperature, so it's going to always melt and run off or whatever, especially like this week, you know, we're in the bus temperatures. <clears throat> I had a kind of an idea. Um, we have the new interpretive trail getting built. There is a pond there, and that's heavily uh, shaded all the time. So. Mm -hmm. And it's thick ice, so it's not going to affect the temperature and uh, thawing as much. So I thought that might be a good area, and there is a trail to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's just another use, and it's very close. It's right behind the... Yeah, it, it, I think that would be also um, an access issue there too, though. Like, it's not... Like, you do have... You would have to go, what, about 500 meters on the trail to get to the pond? Yeah. Something like that? You'd have to walk in. Yeah. It would be an access issue. Councillor Kokalka, then Councillor Lehman. Yeah, so my thought, I think uh, Mr. Wald hit, they're like, we're not even using our, our rink to its full capacity yet. Mm -hmm. If that's something that we want to look at <clears throat> opening it up to uh, no charge use for, for when the ice is open, and, and Mr. Wald made a comment about just putting signs so it's not, uh, we're not staffing to have it watched, and, and people can have pucks and gear out there. Uh, 
just like Fort Nelson. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should be looking at that before we build another I agree. Uh, rank for the cost of building and then main maintaining it. I know Mr. Mech says that they're, you know, looks like they want to maintain it, whether it's him or a group. I think eventually we'd come back to the district uh, building snow. I agree. And yeah. We already have proper maintenance. Yeah. yeah. We have a rank that's not being fully capacity yet. I think we can look at that. And I believe staff there, the, the concept of the, with the clock booking with minor hockey and the Tumblr's figure skating club kind of assist us using that ice more this year. Mm -hmm. I think both groups seem to use it or yep. minor hockey for sure. Yeah. I think that was, uh, that's a huge success there. Mm -hmm. Cost the same amount, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Councilor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, putting up another rink and maintaining it is going to be a huge cost. But uh, what about the TRE field? I know it's on school district property, but I mean, if you had a, you wouldn't have to put up boards, but if you, you know, we can get <coughs> access to water. I don't know if you want to bring a water truck, but so you could put one in and just have a snow bank as edges. I mean, we used to do that too. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's just something to get out. But the thing is, like Councilor Majinski said, the problem with the fluctuating temperature mm -hmm. is a real pain and it could be a problem. Well, we're definitely looking at an increased service. Um, to the community if we were to look mm -hmm. at a board situation, a board's ice situation. Um, well, there's been a lot of talk about the tennis courts getting a rink in there. Um, that could have issues with the, the asphalt in the springtime uh, with a, that amount of water. But, um, yeah, I think we need to look at um, increasing the utilization of the the arena that we have until that is full or just uh, making it more accommodating for the kids to use and whether or not we insist on helmets um, you know and use at your own risk I think that's something we need to look at. Councilor Kirby did you have a comment? Yeah, thank you Mayor Bertrand. Um, I think uh, the community center not being used to capacity is just I think it's the outdoor rink that people want. It's just being outside. Yeah. Um, I th I think if if there was a outdoor rink association formed or some kind of group, nonprofit group that would come and they're going to say, you know, we want would like this built. We'd like to partner with you because this way, then we're liable for what happens at that rink. I, I agree that it should be downtown, easily access to the downtown court, possibly behind the pool or or somewhere downtown. Mm -hmm. But I think. A better plan has to be put in place. I agree. I, I we all grew up with outdoor rink. That's the fun of it. Mm -hmm. But then there's going to be kids shooting hockey pucks. There's going to be kids skating. I mean, what's the? Somebody's kind of got to be overseeing it. Yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I every outdoor rink I've ever used, there's nobody yeah. oversees yeah. it. But I've never been. I've never experienced a, a society or a residency that takes care of it either. It's always the community that takes care of it mm -hmm. to some degree. So um, with the fluctuating weather though throughout the year, like, you know, with proper maintenance, you can still have a rink. You know, a lot of people in town have their rinks this year. Um, with even with the fluctuating temperatures, they're still they've been able to maintain them. So um, there is a possibility there. But what about like when the blocks that aren't booked at the rink, what if we had an open door policy of come and use it on the lunch hour or or come and use it on the weekend? You know, there's no locks on the gates to get on the rink, but um, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Councilor Norbrand. Yeah, no, I'm... <clears throat> completely open to that i mean we have these facilities um you know it's a, it's won't cost us much more to allow free access than it already costs as it is now um you know so and if there's an express need that our kids aren't getting enough um preparation time um absolutely absolutely for it um i would like to to um bring back up the outdoor rink though in you know what's what what sort of costs are we looking at right like mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'd like to know what the, the cost for, you know, preparation of and maintenance of an outdoor rink at the golf course is, like what potential, what, what the potential cost would be with or without boards at the golf course and the tennis courts, right? I mean, um, just so we can see what, what will this actually cost us. I mean, if it's, you know, if, 
it's not it's not a major amount, well then why not, right? Mm -hmm. But if we see that it's it is quite a bit of um, cost, not only in preparation and maintenance, well maybe that's something different, right? And well, it's and, information out there. Yeah, and, and location of it makes a big difference on on uh, maintenance too, right? Like in my opinion, I think the completely underutilized beach volleyball court that we have right beside the community center could be taken out and boards could be placed there as a permanent structure right beside the community center downtown core zamboni can come out take care of it it would be an increased service and it would be the cost of the boards but you know you're right joanne people do like the outdoor rink to be outside and and that is a huge uh um it's part of our culture, honestly, and, and I grew up with it, and I enjoyed it, and and a lot of people that did grow up with it that are missing it. So it's, you know, maybe maybe we um, don't have to do the boards so per se, but um, uh, some sort of structure there, even like a a two by ten border, uh, would would help with in any way with the rink. So. Um, uh, do, do you guys think we should make a motion or any other comments on this? Councillor Lehman. Thank you, Mayor. I, I think it's worth looking into, but the other thing is if you're going to, if you're going to allow hockey on there, you're going to have issues. You're going to have to put something up because the parking lot is right there. Eh? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that might be something to look at. Mm -hmm. Maybe put netting up on, <clears throat> two sides because mm. I think the school's far enough away nobody's going to get that but yeah the cars could be an issue it's also going to be a cost of lighting too yeah so um do we want to ask staff for a report on this Councilor Norbury yeah I'd, I'd like to get some information from staff um trying to write up a preliminary motion okay. um so you know, I would, I'd like to make a motion that staff prepare a report on costs associated with an outdoor hockey rink in multiple locations with and without. Okay. I think that's that, too ambiguous. Nope. Multiple locations. Um, so, like. I guess, should we narrow down multiple locations? Nice. Yeah, because that's going to affect the cost completely. Especially for sources of water, Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. I think we should look at it right behind the community center where the where the uh, volleyball, mm -hmm. the volleyball is. I think that'd be easiest. Mm -hmm. So because we've tried the golf course <clears throat> and that was underutilized. We had it at the high school, which really wasn't utilized that much either. That was one year we had an oval at the high school. Mm -hmm. So I think I think I think where it is at the community center would be good. Those kids that already have equipment already stored at the at the community center, families, easy to park. There's washrooms close by. There's, mm -hmm. I think it makes sense. So can we make a friendly amendment on that motion to? Second, it hasn't second, okay. just started again. Okay, <coughs> so maybe just. Uh, do we just want to do volleyball out. courts and, and tennis courts? Just volleyball. I think tennis, you're looking at, that's going to be trouble. How do you get rid of the snow? It's fenced. It's I, I, I'm, I would worry about the asphalt too. That too. Because it is fairly new. Yeah. Councilor Majinski. Thank you, Will these be permanent boards or can we get the ones that are actual mobile so that they can actually not be us? That could be part of the report, I guess. Yeah, just to see if there's a cost, what the cost on Cost the, difference the between the two. Mm -hmm. Councilor Lehman. Thank you. I'm just wondering about leaving it up in the summer because, I mean, you could use it for... I don't know if anybody plays lacrosse or whatever, or even, you know, you could have soccer or whatever outside instead of inside. I think if you're going to put it up, make it so that it could be used all year. Mm -hmm. Then at least it'll get used to its full capacity. Yeah. Or potential. Councillor Lehman, what would your estimate be on on boards? I'm I'm thinking five grand ish, but. Yeah, you're looking. <sighs> Okay, if you're looking at Councilor Krakowka. So I don't think that's something with council should be discussing anyway. No. So the cost. Sorry, sorry to barge in there, but I, yeah. I think we're asked for a report. That's up to staff to come back with it to, to make sure <clears throat> they're gonna be the legal the legal board so we're not getting ourselves into a, a bigger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But before the motion gets made, I'm curious if we're looking 
I mean, it was already mentioned about light, so we're going to need power. Right, so just for this thing, all I mean, I'm not sure if Mr. Wall's going to catch that in the motion or not, but he's cementing it. Because if you're going to use it all year, I mean, you might as well put cement in there, then it's a firm base. But if you have dirt in there and you have soccer in there or whatever, how would you have uh, ball hockey or anything out there if there's no cement? So just saying, if we're going to make a motion, I'm not sure if it needs to be that detailed, but I think if we're going to be doing it, we should be looking for it done the right way. Now, to me, it's cement, lights, boards, um, whether you use netting or chain link, whatever, that's not my problem, but that's something for staff to come back with. But if we're going to look at that. To me, if, if we're looking at an outdoor rink like we see in other communities, Devon, Clareview, they're cemented. Mm -hmm. So, okay. you know, they're going to have to have uh, uh, yeah, like benches. A, an structure. With right, they're going to have benches if you decide to play an outdoor game. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so walking path, like we expect people to dress inside the community center and walk across. That's going to get that rubber across the asphalt there for them to get to the rink. We're going to build a shop outside there so they can dress in that. Like, there's lots to this. If, Absolutely. If we're thinking of doing it. So Absolutely. Just want to make sure that's aware of that. Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. I remember when I was a kid, we just got out of the car with our skates on and walked. <laughs> it wasn't... <laughs> It's true. Yeah. We didn't have it. It wasn't fancy. It just depends <clears throat> how fancy we're going to get here. True. You know? Yeah. It's... Council Krakowka. So on that, and I don't disagree with you, but now we're also saying that we're going to maintain it with a Zamboni. Oh. So you put your skates on, walk across, or throw rocks on this ice. Zamboni goes through there. We end up wrecking the uh, blade. The blade on the scraper. Like, they're, they're, like, that's why I'm saying there's lots to this. If, if we're going to start using town equipment, all of a sudden we, we take the scraper out or whatever happens, then they go inside and do the main rink. We have another issue in the inside because of whatever came in from the outside. Like that, that's why I'm saying like, if we're doing it, are we doing the whole the whole thing? Right? That's my concern. Yeah, Councilor Norbert. And I think we can make that decision um, whether we want to actually have a zamboni out there or or if we're just gonna you know flood this area and and let it be for this the winter time. I don't think we need to make that decision now. We're just you know looking at some what are the what are the actual costs and stay, taking the first steps into researching this. So just on that, you see, well, to me, it's kind of, kind of you got to have that kind of thought in your head with example, they're flooding. If you're just going to flood it, it's a liability we're taking now. It's not a flat surface no more. Now we got these big bumps out there. Somebody goes skate and catches the rod or catches the, the lift on there. It falls down, breaks an ankle. Right. So there, there is lots of thoughts into a, to an outdoor rink. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of a lot of other communities have a tractor with a, a makeshift. Make shift. Whatever make it shift. is, I know there's one in Devon had the same thing and stuff, but. So, so, I mean, I think that's up for the staff report. I just want to make sure we hit it all at yep. getting the full total back to us. Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. When I picture an out or think of an outdoor rink, I don't think of the district taking care of it. I, I want to get, I, I see the cost, looking at what it's going to cost to build it. Kids can work a shovel. I mean, I, it's got to be, I think it's got to be a real partnership. I, I, I can see fundraising to even uh, at some point to help get some of these costs in, you, you know, just. We want it. We build it. That can't can't be it. I'd like to see the cost, with the thought of the district is just not going to be looking after it. Yeah. Really, you know, and and Zamboni. I it was brought up, but I can't see a Zamboni ever going out there. I think it's something that if that's what the parents and the kids want, then they got to work hard and they got to make it happen as well, not just the district pays. Councillor Norbury. You know, and like if we're looking at building a permanent structure or semi-permanent structure, this seems like it would be a perfect opportunity to reach out to NDIT and have them uh, chip in part of the cost. I mean, that's what they're there for, right? Helping build infrastructure. So I think if we're looking at um, a service um, increase, maybe there's money out there too, so the costs. But the first step is to first get the reports to show that we're committed to actually trying this and and it's not it's not a commitment that we have to do this it's just getting more information to make better better uh decision mm -hmm. council kalka yeah i just well, saying there now i mean make the motion the town can get the report council kirby you said it earlier there about you know having an outdoor rink society or whatever it, it to me if, if it's done that way i think we could probably get away with the concept of the district taking over maintenance but i think if we decide to go in there and build it unless we're going to give it to some other group to, to take on that, I think and it still becomes our liability because we built it, it's ours, so we're gonna have to maintain it unless we were to give it to somebody. Like, you know, build it and give it to that, like you said, the outdoor ring society or, or something like that. I think then you can get away with, to me, I mean, I could be wrong, but from the maintenance part of it, kids can shovel it or whatever, but, and and I've been in Edmonton and that's how it's done is, I mean, I mean obviously it's a bigger bigger uh, outlet than ours, but like Homestead and Clearview and, and Beverly, we'd have our own outdoor rink 
but we also had a neighborhood clubhouse. Mm -hmm. So we had the heated in there and we all the shovels were there. You had to take care of the rain. You had to flood it when you were done. And then once 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 every three days, uh, whoever was in charge of that community community hall would have the tractors and bony out there. But yeah, like, so if we're gonna do something like that, then I I can see us not taking on the liability. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the regular maintenance, the shoveling of it, that's definitely up to users to do that. But it's the flooding aspect that really needs to be controlled in order to have a product there too. You know, anybody can run a hose, but not everybody can build ice either. So it's, if we were to um, have a society to look after the maintenance, it would be up to us to provide the water supply at a convenient location for it. So um, that's another factor that we have to look at too. Councilor Norbury. All right, so it's a bit of a long one, so bear with me here. So um, I'd like to make a motion that um, staff prepare a report on cost association associated with uh, creation of an outdoor hockey rink at the volleyball court area, including the maintenance cost of ice, the costs and of purchasing and installation of hockey boards and or potential permanent structures such as a pad for the ice, lights and um, benches. Benches. Seconder, Councilor Kalka. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? <coughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, uh, Council okay. spoke about um, wanting to see ways to increase utilization of the current. Do you want that report as well? Yeah, I think so. I think we need to look at that absolutely. And, and um, there are some options there, I think, that we can definitely discuss. Please. I need a motion. Um, would anyone like to make a motion on that? Councilor Gorkalka. Make a motion that we ask staff to produce a report in regards to making the uh, facility we have the rink uh, more accessible for weekends and, and non use ice time. Seconder. Councilor Majinski. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Okay. And also, thank you to Mr. Mech for, for bringing that to council. Uh, report 7.1, Recreation Pass Benefit Policy, Admin 52, a report from Acting Director of Community Services and Facilities, dated March 11th, 2019, to present a policy to Council that outlines the procedures for issuing VIP recreation passes. Recommendation, please. Councillor Kokalka. Before I make a recommendation, I know normally we put a recommendation on the floor and then we discuss it, <clears throat> but I think there's some... some to me, a lot of comments can be made on here. To, to me, I mean, if somebody else wants to make a motion, that's fine. That's what we I just think we should discuss first, and that way we're not making a motion, turning it down, another motion, turning it down. And if that would be okay, I know that's not normally how we do it, but I mean, I know I have some some thoughts and some input, and I think if I make a recommendation, I miss something that some other councilor is thinking about, or add something that some other councilor doesn't like, then we're going to turn that one down and redo it. I'm just wondering if that would be acceptable by the rest of council and yourself to look at. Um, I think we need to deal with the recommendation as presented to begin with. <clears throat> Mr. Wall? On that one, Mayor Bertrand, because it's the P&P, uh, &P, you can't actually adopt this policy. It's got to go forward to the next meeting. So this is the report that's going to be going to the council meeting. Okay. And so this is council's opportunity to read it, discuss it, and um, pass motions to make changes for it when it comes to the... Um, Okay. So you don't want to pass the recommendation presented here. Okay, so can we make a re recommendation for discussion then? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so I'll make the recommendation that Council brings the recreation pass benefit policy up for discussion. Seconder, Councilor Kirby. All in favor? Carried. Councilor Kalka. Yes. So can I hit a couple key points, or do you want one and then we'll wait? Like, may I have a few things? Yep. By all means. Okay. So I know I I've this down and actually I sat on the committee that we brought this forward. A couple things. I think one we've we've missed one organization in regards to golf passes, and that would be through BC Ambulance. Um, they're first responders as well. We hit the 
the firefighters with it, as well as the nurses. Um, I know we mentioned the RCMP in that committee and, and realized how they're paid federally and stuff like that. We thought we'd be, we could be overstepping giving them that, that kind of stuff, so we didn't give them the golf pass. But I think we missed the BCM and stuff, so I'd like to see that added. And the other thing, and I'm not saying it was done wrong or, or caught capture wrong, but there was talk, and I, and I think what we need to do there with the, in regards to the golf passes, that it should be the member, not the member and the immediate family. So to me, it should be for the firefighter or for the nurse or for the doctor, not and their immediate family. So the community access pass, to me, it should be for the firefighter, the doctor, the nurse, and their immediate family. But with the golf thing, I think it should be for the person that's doing Just the job, my yep. personal opinion. I agree. So I think I'll hit on those ones for now, and then I'll bring some other stuff forward. Okay. Um, well, I see the on the background here, BC Ambulance is included in this yes, um, list here. Second paragraph. Background. Not for the golf membership. The district to offer members to immediate family members of Tumbridge nursing staff, doctor staff, healthcare professional staff, and volunteer fire firefighters as a free annual VIP golf Page 12. Oh. Page. So they're, included in the, they're included in the community pass, which is great, and their family, and, they, and so should be. But my thoughts is they were missed in regards to the golf membership. We're trying to do it to retain and 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 look for other people who take on some of these jobs and including the doctors the the nurses the health staff and the firefighters i mean hoping more people would volunteer as a firefighter i mean you get a bit of a privilege for giving up so much of your time to the community and, and the residents and I, I think you know to me the ambulance attendants the paramedics do the same thing i absolutely agree with you right now i think there's 12 i, mean, I don't want to say the number because it could be wrong but you know some of this stuff is an incentive to um Make a person that might go to Chatwin or, or Dawes Creek to work in ambulance, look at Tumble Ridge and say, geez, you know, this is a better fit. You know, I mean, yeah, we're getting, getting something out of it, but they also can stay healthy too, right? Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I brought it up. And just so for the record, I am no longer with BC Ambulance. Mm -hmm. So this is not to get something for myself. Mm -hmm. one of the, that's a record. I have retired from BC Ambulance. So yep. I just think they were missed in our last motion. Yeah, I completely agree with you. They are very important for responder and... And there, they do have staff shortages as well, so it, it is a benefit to to offer that as well. So maybe Mr. Wall can put those motions out and, and make these changes uh, as we go, and we can deal with other ones, or else we'll get okay. lost and forgotten. Okay, Councilor Korkalka. So I'd like to. I hate doing motions on the wing here. I'll, I'll help you out. So right, the, the motion would be, and let's. I'll maybe I'll deal with them one at a time. So yeah. First motion to um, add. BC Ambulance to the list of uh, organizations to receive golf passes. Can we just amend that that it's the, um, the paramedic? So I was going to my okay, no problem. I'll do it then. Add that one in and then get council to deal with that one next. Okay. 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 Motion is presented. Thank you. Seconder, Council Kirby. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Second. So the second would be to remove. Uh, so it would be to remove the family, all family members from the golf pass benefits. Yep. Okay. So to, that that um, from the policy, all family members be removed from the golf pass benefit. Okay. Motion is presented. Second, Council Kirby. Any other discussion, Council Kalka? So I'll just hit on it again. I mean, I guess <coughs> I, I threw it out there just trying to get some discussion going. And, and thank you, Mr. Wall, for saying that we should do it as motions. The, my concept there again is to show benefit to the individuals that have stepped up, the volunteer firefighters. I mean, don't even wrong. Their families are important too, and they're, they 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 give a lot to for these firefighters to be able to respond to a call. Same with the ambulance uh, personnel, but to me, it, it's a, a direct thank you to them that get they're getting something extra for doing. It. And that's my my idea here. I have talked to a few people. Some some of the members are like you know they weren't really sure. They thought it was better the other like keeping the families. And my thought is it, it, it is just to show gratitude from to me from a counselor. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody supports it. If you don't, that's your choice, but. It's a gratitude back to them. Mm -hmm. I just think it's, it's a, one, it's, I know it doesn't cost us anything, really it doesn't, but to me it's a direct thank you to the member of the board. Completely agree. Okay, uh, was there another motion you wanted to make? That's one. That's one that's on the floor. Is the one. Okay, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Councilor Norbury. Um, you know, I'd like to bring up the, 
we're ex also excluding the counseling staff at, at um, the, the health center. Um, you know, I, I'd like to, you know, bring up the discussion of including them in, in these, uh, in both passes. I mean, they're they're doing an incredibly hard job in um, dealing with people who um, you know, need counseling services. And I think it's I think it's in the same vein as if we're talking about um, health um, healthcare professional staff. You know, and we're we're in. Uh, Talking to community members, we're in a dire need of, of counseling staff in town, and I'm always hearing concerns over a lack of um, mental health services. Councillor Lehman, thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Wouldn't wouldn't they be included in, under healthcare professionals? They aren't at the moment, and actually, our our um, our social worker Barb petitioned us to include all of the staff at the medical center a few meetings ago and and we voted that down so she wasn't included in this oh council Krakowka. so i'm sorry we voted it down two meetings ago well a few meetings ago I'm okay not i'm sure. sorry I mean, maybe yeah. I wasn't, and that's why yeah. i was concerned yeah no it, do you do you remember that letter she sent barb yeah, I remember. Social media. Okay. So, so I guess my question to Council Norberry is: Is can you just in? I mean, don't like I said, I've been over there for a while. How many how many uh, mental health professionals do we have that are that are that are ticketed professionals in town right now? Do you know? Well, I, I don't even think you can consider Barb in that category either because she's a social worker. She's not actually a counselor either, so. Go ahead. I asked Barb who we're talking about. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't want to be used names. I'm sorry. I don't know who you're talking about. Okay. The, she's our social worker. Yeah. But Barb, Barb Hagginson is her name. Hagginson, sorry, she's yes. been to town about six months ago. Okay. Thank you. I didn't. Sorry. My apologies. Okay. Any other discussion? Councilor Krakowka? So, like, my understanding is we have no mental health in town at this time. Correct. And maybe I'm wrong. But you, and then maybe that's who you were talking about. That's why I guess my question was to Councilor. Councilor Norbury. My thought is just to have it um, as we're building this policy to allow for if we do get a counselor in town or someone designated to do counseling services, that they be included in this policy. As it is a, um, you know, a professional um, job profession, <laughs> you know. So that would be a tricky category too because the school district hires counselors to work at the school as well. So, you know, would we be... Uh, including that benefit to them as well, you know, Councillor Norbury. Well, then fair enough. I mean, maybe we just um, we look at it as it comes up in the future, right? If 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 somebody is hired as a mental health professional, then we can look at amending the policy, but we don't need to hold it up on ifs or maybes. So, so what if we had a motion to amend our health care professionals designation to include our social worker and and possible future counselor Would that make sense Councilor Norbury yeah I, th I think that would sort of fit the um, fundamental idea of the policy in that we're trying to recognize um, jobs that are in our health center that are in um, demand and we want to thank them for coming and, and doing a tough job in our uh, and show our, our appreciation center. Absolutely. Councillor Korkowka. Yeah, I don't say I fully disagree, but uh, I just think I'm going to put this out there a little bit. I think the reason this came forward, <clears throat> I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're not, they're not first there, but it was to, one, you know, uh, retain and, and, and attract nurses, um, doctors. I'm not saying that we're not trying to, to attract um, mental health, but my thing was is I think some of the reason was is for what these individuals see on the call. Um, as a first responder, I'm not saying that mental health doesn't deal with some different scenarios. Uh, I have an interesting perspective. Like, on. like, yeah, and you might. And my thing is, it's the same as a social worker. I mean, it's they are definitely dealing with different different criteria or different things, and it, it might not be a bad thing. I just, I'm just not sure. Like, where do you stop? Do we do we add the janitor under that? Do we add? You know what I mean? So I'm just curious well, what the thoughts are there. Really, it's the definition of our healthcare professionals that we yeah. should be clarifying too, yeah. right? Yeah. So if the benefit is to our first responders to deal with the trauma that they have to deal with, um, 
they are also going to need counselors to to deal with that trauma as well. So it's um, it's kind of a uh, interesting circle there, Council Norbury. I mean, if we're thank you, if we're looking at the list of people that we're giving them to, we're we're talking about our X-ray techs, our lab techs, um, you know, and I don't think that they fit directly into that. Um, are seeing um, extreme cases, but they are um, professional jobs that. Um, we need to um, retain and we need to reward for being here. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's in the same vein. I agree. Councilor Majinski. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. I think we should maybe hone in on maybe the essential emergency services. There are going to be whole count of, of how many professions that are going to be included in this. Could get to be quite a few people here, not just uh, what's been talked about already, but the essential ones that are like the first responders, because there will be. Um, they will have to have count. Like, say you have um, fire, they will do counseling as well, not just the uh, victim. But um, as soon as you get into stuff like that, it's going to get quite a bit of. It, it, there has to be a, a line drawn, even though there are going to be so many professionals that are going to be taking on some of these. So. Absolutely, I agree. Councilor Kalka. Great. Right. Back to Councilor Norbury for me. So are you telling or telling me that X-ray and lab are not included under healthcare professionals, or they are? I'm sorry, maybe I misunderstood. They are. Yeah, and I'm and I'm fine if we want to try and draw that out. Like to me, it's there is a cost to it. I mean, but it really and truly it doesn't cost the district. I mean, our facility sits down there, whether it's a swimming pool, the ice rink, or weight room. We still have staff that's in there, you know, and, and same in the swimming pool. We still have to circulate the water, still have to heat it. There's one person in there or nobody. And same as the rink. And I think that's why Mr. Wall came up with that Or staff came up with the rink policy. It was to try and get used more because it was costing him the same sitting empty. And I think that'd be the same as a golf course. Once the grass grows, we still have to cut. So I think if you're willing to put something out there to try and add stuff, I think. Mm -hmm. Councilor Norbury. Yeah, and I think uh, that that's, that's the, we're both in the same um, mindset. And yeah, it doesn't cost, and it doesn't cost us any more to add one more thing. And, and, um, you know, I'm absolutely in support of giving it to our x-ray techs and our lab techs because those positions are in need of additional recruitment. And, um, you know, I just think when we're, if, we're, if we're drawing a line in this case, that line should be a little farther out and it should include our, our counseling professionals. Yeah. I have a question, um, Mr. Wall. This definition of any other employee working in the capacity of a medical profession, that's wide open. Would that include our social worker? It has. It, we haven't applied it that way so far. That clarification should come from us. Okay. So, in your view, then, who is any other employee working in the capacity of a medical profession? Uh, I wouldn't want to go off and try to guess what could be brought into town, but there's a number of different healthcare professionals that can be brought in. If we have Chiropractors? Could be massage therapists. You could have um, uh, end of what's the term? The end of care, end of life care. care, palliative care, palliative care. Yeah, um, assisted living. Yeah, assisted mm -hmm. living. Yeah, and this is where the policy needs to come for a little bit of clarification on on how wide of a net is council intending to cast here. Counselors. And I think that's yeah, just something that you council maybe should just get ready to. Put some motions out on because it sounds like everybody has their opinion on either we're going to widen it or we're going to narrow it. We just need to figure that out. Yeah, I'm just concerned about this. Uh, any other employee working in the capacity of a medical profession because you know it, you could interpret that as the uh, janitorial staff working at the medical center. And I think council's already decided that this is more so for the professionals than it would be for any other employee. So I'd like to make a motion that we um, take out this statement of any other employee working in the capacity of a medical profession out of this policy. Seconder? Councillor Lehman, any discussion? All in favour? Carried. Thank you. Councillor Norbert. Yeah, so I'd like to make a motion to add in a um, social worker and or, um, let's just, let's leave it at social worker, included yeah. in the list of um, uh, 
full-time or part-time staff to receive both the community center passes and uh, VIP golf membership passes. Okay, seconder. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried, thank you. Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Um, I um, asked uh, Mr. Wall this week just how many passes that were handed out. And so there was 13 child passes, 16 golf passes, 51 adult passes. And I and I just roughly figured that out to be about $42,000. That's that's give or take. That's roughly about the cost of, of, of doing this. And um, I'd like to see at the end of each year that we get a report back just with the with the actual numbers so that we can either so we can see how we're doing like what the costs are um, and then also see how we're doing when it comes to are we retaining doctors are we getting any you know just so we can kind of keep a, an eye on how this is this and, is a, and, and a breakdown of yeah. who has like right. like the volunteer firefighters and mm -hmm. medical staff absolutely and there was yeah and I also had questions about you know what is part-time and so Mr. Wald let me know that each department is in charge of figuring out who, you know, who's getting the benefits and stuff. I mean, I think it's a great, a great way to, you know, try to attract. It seems like our scope has really gotten quite a bit bigger when it was just retaining doctors and now it's kind of branched out a bit. And I think, you know, looking at that, we need to look at this at the end of, of, of the year again, just to see. Yeah, I agree. So can, can you make a motion on that, requesting that information? From staff. I'll make a motion to request a report uh, on our VIP memberships at the end of each year. With the breakdown. With the, with the breakdown of costs and who and what organizations were involved. Yeah. Seconder, Councilor Norbury. Any discussion, Councilor Kalka. So when you're looking for this report, report, Councilor Kirby, are you looking for like we can hand out all the passes we want? Are you looking in this report to see or have it tracked as well? Like I'm just asking, like, are we going to, so we can hand out a, a, a golf pass to every firefighter or to every paramedic or to every nurse, but some of them might not ever golf. True. Right? So, I mean, we, we say we hand these out, and I'm fine with that, don't get me wrong, but that's what I'm wondering. We, like, to me, I'd rather see it tracked. I'm okay. not sure there's a yeah. way of doing that, but it would be nice to know that, you know, we handed out six golf memberships to the fire department or whatever, or 30 or whatever, wherever they are, and they, well, once we handed out, there was 10 people that we golfed 10 times. Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Pertrand. Um, I'm not too sure how these passes are working. If it's if it's a, if it's a card that's activated every time, or a punch card, or how it's going. So I think it's just for us. You know, we're, we we will show a loss of revenue at some places because all of a sudden there might be golf um, memberships that aren't purchased anymore. And it's not. I'm not looking at it on negative side, but just so it, like it, it's almost a grant and aid. It's just something that we can keep a, just a little bit of a. You know, information, information, statistics, yeah, and a, a yeah. more of a stat than anything else. So, Mr. Wall, is that possible to do with the pass that we have issued at the moment, Mr. It's, Wall? Is gonna. I, I think it would be possible in some of the areas. It depends on. It, it honestly depends on whether or not we're going to be able to keep our current um, booking system at the community center. We've had a lot of issues with it to the point that we're having serious discussions to not continue with it anymore unless the problems get fixed. If we have to look at a new system, um, I can't promise you what that new system will entail, but right now, I believe it would be possible for us to add a payment option, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Joy, but we could probably add a payment option into EREC that would allow uh, people to bring it up in their computers and that would track it that way. It, it, it's possible. We'd have to work with the company in order to build that uh, build that functionality just to it. Okay. Councillor Norbury. My concern is um, <clears throat> I'm having a trouble understanding why we need to know how much they're actually using it. Like we want them to use it. Like is it is it just to know that they're using these passes or like because one we're giving them to show appreciation if they choose to use it or not. Like that's. Doesn't bother me either way. I'm I'm, I'm not interested. Councilor in Kalka. Yeah. So my thing, my thought was when with the motion of it having a report come back to tell us how much we gave out in money. Mm -hmm. I mean that may mean nothing because we might have said we gave out thirty golf passes, but they never ever used any of them. So we say we gave out thirty thousand in golf passes, but nobody golfed. 
So really and truly, we gave out nothing. In my point, we might give out thirty dollars worth, thirty thousand dollars worth of golf passes, yearly passes, but not one of those people ever golfed or ever swam. Or so really and truly, we're gonna get a number back saying we gave out forty thousand dollars in VIP passes, but they never. They, no, we want them to use them. Don't get me wrong, Council Norbury, but maybe we don't know that maybe they didn't use them. Like I, I would think the golf course people are only gonna take the golf pass if they are a golfer, mm -hmm. but they might not sure if they want it. Yeah. But it'd be nice to me like if we're gonna track how much money we give out, it's pretty quick. Pretty quick report to say that we gave out 16 golf passes, 52 VIP to the community center, and so on. But maybe they didn't swim, or they didn't use a weight room, or they didn't skate. Well, that pass, if it's worth $275, it wasn't ever used. So how would you put that into you? You get that report back saying we gave out $40,000, but really we didn't because half of them weren't used. I think I think we so could. I'm just curious. If we're going to use a number, if the I, number's going to come in front of me, that means... Yeah, and I think we can build on that report as well. Like, I think initially we'll get the report of, of what we're issuing out, but until our software with the passes coincide to see the actual usage, then I think that report can expand in, into the future. Councilor Kirby, did you have another yeah. comment? Um, yeah, I think it, was, it's, it's, it doesn't have to really be about the, the dollar value, but I think I, it's nice to track it. I like to know how many passes were were, getting, were mm -hmm. given out. I think that's a good number to see fifty one. That's that's a that's a that's great. It's a big number. It's a good and just number. To keep, yeah. And just to keep just to keep up to date with that, mm -hmm. you know, I think I, I like looking at that and saying that's this is great. It's mm -hmm. a big number, you know. Uh, absolutely, and I think after, later on, once we get our software figured mm -hmm. out, uh, we can expand on that report too. So I'll call the question um, for the report. All in favor. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to uh, continue this discussion. Um, I, I would like to propose to Council to think about um, adding district staff and Mayor and Council onto this VIP access pass and VIP golf membership. <coughs> and, and I'll give you a break, or the reasoning for that. Um, Number one, I absolutely appreciate everything that every district staff member does for this community. Not only as a resident before I became mayor, but <laughs> now that I've become mayor and, and have seen firsthand a lot of district staff that um, put their heart and soul into their jobs, I think they deserve a benefit. Um, I grew up working on golf courses. I've worked on them for close to 10 years. Every golf course of the four that I worked at, you got a golf membership when you worked. You put your time in to enjoy the fruits of your labor after work. That built a sense of pride that really isn't measurable. And I have a, from what I've experienced in this community, I don't think our sense of pride on our, our entire district staff is where it should be and I think to show the appreciation of giving all of district staff a VIP access to the buildings that they take care of the buildings that they clean the um, uh, services that we provide I think the pride factor goes up exponentially and the appreciation factor of mayor and council to district staff goes up as well. And I think it's a benefit we need to consider. What are your thoughts? Councilor Majinski. Hey Bertrand, thank you. Um, do we know how many staff we have? Roughly? Mr. Wall? What are we looking at? I mean, it depends if you're going to include casuals or not, but I'd say you have a good round number to work with would be 50. 50 district staff? Not including mayor and council. Yeah. Councilor Norbury. I think in the um, the economic report there was seventy when uh, you know, that last economic report came out in terms of the uh, employers mm -hmm. in town. The district was listed about seventy. Okay. It's Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Well, do I think they deserve it? Absolutely. Um, what was the backlash? Be? <laughs> Not sure. Like I, I, I could see. You know, I, I think it's something to talk about. Is it a pick a facility that you would like to use? Um, is it a punch card? Is it, you know, it, it's something. It's, 
I'm thinking right in there, just the I'm thinking the same VIP access as as these as this policy is stating. I, I would like to include the um, district staff and mayor and council in this policy. So, Councilor Kerf. Just another thing. It's just maybe you know. You know, a lot of people, if you're working in a, a certain place, you get a discount. Is it a half price membership? Is it a, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, though. I, well, I think currently, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Mr. Wall, I think currently they have uh, a $300 um, benefit uh, for recreation. Is that correct? Yes. Right. So they can just choose to use that in whatever. Okay. Hmm. Um, but that is also a union benefit, is that correct? That doesn't apply to staff? No, staff has that. Staff has as well? Okay. Councillor Norbury? Yeah, I mean, I'll speak to, um, you know, I, I was a district employee for a while. I worked downstairs at the gym. And I know, um, you know, that discussion, like, I didn't pay for my, uh, I had to pay for my own gym pass. And, you know, amongst district staff, that question was always there. Like, you know, these are our facilities. Why do we have to pay? I don't know how I feel about, um, you know, having a blanket all access pass or, or discount. I think that needs to be a little more time to think on it and um, debate. But, um, you know, it's definitely something people think about. You know, like, we work here, why don't we receive some benefit as well? Absolutely. Councilor Grakowka. Thanks. If I may, I guess my question you'd be with council and, the, and, and yourself. Is that something we would add into this policy or into our council policy? Council procedure? Uh, our council payroll policy. Our what, sorry? Payroll policy, our paying policy, our remuneration policy. Would that be something we would add into our remuneration policy instead of into this policy? Well, I think it would um, be added as a benefit, a taxable benefit, wouldn't it? I believe. This would be coming from the district, so I don't think these passes would be a taxable benefit. I'd have to look into whether this would be a taxable benefit. Giving it to the other organizations, I don't think they have to take this taxable benefit coming from your employer. I'm not sure off the top of my head. But as far as the better place to put this in, it would be fine in this policy or the creation of another policy. This wouldn't fit well into our um, other policies. Our other policies are more procedural than they are uh, laying out the benefits unless you wanted to put it into the collective agreement. And I would suggest to council that's not the right place for it. Okay, Councilor Kalka. Yeah, so just on that, I think, I mean, I think there's some mixed feelings, but I, I definitely don't disagree with you in regards to staff, uh, Mr. Wall staff or, or whatever. I'd like to hear from Mr. Wall if I'm hey what his thoughts are. For if, for if if this was to pass from the council side to offer this up to his staff. For how their staff would feel about it? No, I'd like to I'd like to know what Mr. Wall thinks about it. Oh just what he his I, thoughts I'd like his opinion. He's our he's our CAO, it's his employees. Yeah. Um, I would think his staff if he was to, to go to his staff and say it they'd jump up and down. But again, I would like to hear it from Mr. Wall. Okay, Mr. Wall. Well, before that, I, I'll uh, I will uh, um, chime in here a little bit. I did ask Mr. Wall about the um, uh, that I was going to bring this forward, and and from what I got, his main concern was public perception, and um, <laughs> I'm willing to change public perception. Um, I, I'd like to change a lot of different cultures and, and public perceptions. And, and you know what, I, I also want to breed pride in being a district employee too. Um, I think, you know, the recognition that us as councillors and, and mayor, um, you know, people appreciate the fact that we've stepped up and to do this job. Um, but, you know, what other benefit do we have of putting our time in for the district that a lot of people of the residents don't see. What other benefit do you have besides a thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars a year? I mean, I don't know. That's my opinion. Councilor Kalka. I know you had a discussion with Mr. Wall, and, the, mm -hmm. and, I, and again, I'd, I'd like to hear from Mr. Wall. And the reason I'd like to hear from Mr. Wall. Um, one, I don't think the perception would be. I mean, I think if council votes, I think that's that's our, our that's our heat from the residents. If we decide to do something like that, that's a you know giving something to Mr. Wall to, to use or whatever. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think it's about retaining employees or, or attracting employees. But again, I think the employees, you know, 
Mr. Kelsey and Norby hit it. I mean, I think they're great. I mean, I, I think we don't realize that some of the things the employee, the Mr. Walls employees do, they, you know, we just hear about it in meetings. So <clears throat> I, let, I like to hear from Mr. Wall. And I do have a comment to make after Mr. Wall, if I may. Absolutely. Mr. Wall. <laughs> that's what I was trying to avoid. Yeah, I'll answer. I'm fine with that too. I yeah. Know. Know that's yeah. Uh, and uh, listen, I'm, I'm going to answer. I think that there's a couple ways to look at this. If if you're looking, the, this would be received very well by the membership, and I've got no doubt about that. And it would also be something that every time is pulled out of your pocket and used, you feel that appreciation which has been shown to you from the other council. It's very different from the other things that you do, right? The um, even the Christmas parties can start to become fairly routine, but when you have to actually pull out a card and show it, uh, you see why you have it and the fact that you get to have it. And I know that a lot of our district members are pretty heavy users of the facilities as well, so I think that would go over very, very well. Um, I am concerned about the public uh, perception of this. If council's willing to take it and own it, then that's great. Um, I would say as long as council is willing to do that, I'd be very supportive um, of it. I'm willing to do that. That's why I brought it forward. Council Kirby. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, you know, we talk about conflict of interest. As you all know, I love golfing. I just might keep running for council. So <laughs> you know. I'm just kidding. But I mean, in that sense, we've, we voted ourselves a raise this year. And now we're going to vote, you know, I, I'm behind it for the staff. I'm going to feel a little bit different about voting myself in a membership because I, I, I'm, I'm a golfer. I love it. I could probably not, I don't go to the gym as enough, but uh, with the facility passes and stuff. Uh, I'm with you though. I like, I like your idea about changing public perception and, and, and having some community pride. I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know where I'm sitting on the boat right yet, but I, I, I do, I do. I absolutely understand yeah, your, yeah. your feeling of yeah. guilt on that. And you know what, it's, I don't look at it as we first got in and gave ourselves a raise. It, yeah. th that was presented to us because of the Revenue Canada yeah. changes, right? Exactly. So it's not a, it wasn't, it, it can't be perceived that there was a personal agenda of mine to give myself oh, a raise no, as soon as I, I get in, right? That, no, it's it's yeah. not that, but that could be yeah. public perception yeah. as well. But that's not the case. Um, this this um, addition to this policy is a lot more than just the set, six of us sitting here. It's the fifty or sixty district employees that really don't get shown the appreciation from mayor and council for doing above and beyond their job. And I think by giving these kind of benefits to these people, I think you do step up another level to the work that they're putting towards their job and, and, and their effort and, and their, their pride. You know, I know there is quite a few people that work at the rec center that take a lot of pride in, in their work, but there's also quite a few employees, district employees, that are there for a paycheck, you know, and, and, and the public perception is um, they're a district employee, you know, we, we, we can't show favoritism to this area of town you know they can't they have to be completely unbiased they're not allowed to speak to us um you know this is this is part of a culture change that i that i like to make that's that's my motivation for it councillor lehman okay first of all i thought we were getting seven thousand dollars a year and it's not 13 so <laughs> and <laughs> i i think what uh <laughs> Councillor Kirby brought up in the first place was, you know, even if you give a 10 or 20 percent discount to, say, council instead of a free membership, I think I'd be a little bit more in favor of that than just giving away only because, well, I don't know, I the golf course needs to be make money. And I mean, if you give away all the memberships, then where does the revenue come from other than out of town green fees? So as far as council's concerned I I would just rather have a, you know a small discount and that's fine by me okay and the district staff well 
it might not be a bad idea. Okay. Any other discussion before I make a motion? Councilor Rokalka? I make a motion first if you like, but I just want to make a comment. The reason I asked for Mr. Wall's opinion, I mean, there was discussion in regards to snow removal here, and after that, after that meeting, I had a little discussion with one of Mr. Wall's employees and found out how some of the employees, and I mean, not just them, but I mean, there's other, obviously other ones, were actually working as a group to volunteer or make sure one of them was in town to assist if snow was to hit. Actually, on their own time, so they had somebody else on call, and they would work it out to make sure one of the other individuals could be in town if they needed to plow a truck out or the loaders out. So, you know, I think, you know, hats off to Mr. Wall, but his staff as well. And I think, you know, this is a no-brainer when it comes to me for a vote for staff. Council might be a different concept. But, um, you know, I mean, I don't want to mention staff names, but like you mentioned, the community centre. I know individuals there that, that over and beyond, um, within town hall, you know, you can come down here on Saturday, pick up your agenda, and you got three employees, and uh, Mr. Wall's employees are in here. You know, so I, I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, this is a, I mean, one, you can see that some of them, you can see the employees don't, that have the heart for the community. And I think mm -hmm. this is something that if Mr. Wall's comfortable with it, and it sounded like he was comfortable with it, as long as we're going to own it. And I'm fine owning it with the taxpayers, with the residents. I am totally fine answering to it. I think it's uh, a great give back to the people that actually work in the facilities. Um, they can use them too. I mean, Councilor Norbert, you hit it when you said you worked for the district and, you know, had to still pay for your own pass. And he, you know, you kind of question that as employees. Uh, I, I think this maybe turns around, maybe morale for Mr. Wall too, if, there's a, if there is a morale issue. I'm not saying there is, if there was. You know, I think this is, so I think hats off for you to, to bring that forward and, and think about it. I, and morale, morale is a big factor to productivity. Benefits help that. Councilor Norbury. Yeah, I mean, I'll... I'll agree with Councillor Kalka and, and even a little go a little bit more, more into that. I mean, yeah, our, our staff they do a tough job and they get a lot of grief sometimes. And you know, if we if we can if this is a step to helping them with their health and wellness so they can stay happy, they can be productive. You know, I don't I don't see an issue with it for district staff. For ourselves, I'm okay paying for my own, my own memberships every year. It's very reasonable, especially in comparison to other cities and towns that mm -hmm. I've, I've had memberships at. We had really good deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll break up that motion to two separate ones then. So I'd like to make a motion that we include in our recreation pen pass benefit policy, we include all district staff excluding casual labor for the VIP all access pass and the VIP golf membership. Seconder? Or just before we second that, like, are we talking? Are we looking at doing it the same way, where it's the community center pass or the, yeah, the rec center pass would be for them and their family, their immediate family, or just the employee, and then same with the golf thing. Just the employee, just I'm employee. talking about. And I, okay, and it hasn't been second yet, but I would, I don't like that we're isolating the casuals out. I mean, there's some casuals that work. I suppose, yeah. I, 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 I mean, again, I'm not going to mention names of Mr. Wall staff, but mm -hmm. I know I'm very aware there's some casuals that are, you know, filling some heavy positions that are working. In, you know, maybe we leave it up to him somehow, but before, I mean, so said, but that would be my concern. I don't think we should leave casuals. Mr. Wall. Still district employees. We have a threshold for casuals within the collective agreement at which a number of benefits kicks in. And so if you leave it with, with me, I can include that same threshold kick in. So like when you get um, different equipment allowances and help you live and stuff like that. So we can use that same threshold. And that's determined by how long that casual is employed how many hours they work in the year yeah yeah okay i think that's fair i'll fix that so council norby so just to clarify with that do would these only kick in after a year of them working because you know to, to speak to councillor kakalka's um what he's saying is that there are a lot of staff that are pulling in near full-time hours and they are casual um so yeah, that's my concern is that they have to wait a year until they can uh, um, reap the benefit for this. Maybe we can have more clarification. So Mr. That. Wall, how many hours does a casual put in before those benefits kick in? I have to check. So less, less than a year, possibly? Well, I guess yeah. depending on the amount of work given, but... Yeah, the, let me just go and, and cut. I think that's the best way to do it. If you want to include the casuals who are working a lot, just have it as the same threshold that the other benefits kick in. So there, um, 
into Councillor Norbury's question, what had happened, what would happen, because there's people that are going to be in that threshold already and they'll get it immediately. But let's say we get a new casual one and they start working. They're going to have to work up until they hit that threshold. They'll hit the threshold and then the benefits kick in for them for the rest of the year and from that path. Like that. So those casuals may not get the benefit of it for a full year, but they'll get it for half. Again, I don't think you're going to run into too many issues with that because it, that system's already built in with a number of other, other benefits. Right. So if we just include district staff in here, you would fall under the, the responsibility for listing out that district staff, sure. just like yeah. every other manager here, yeah. correct? Okay, Councillor Kokalka. Uh, yeah, thank you, Your Worship. I mean, good comments in regards to the threshold. Do we have to add that into the motion? I think For casuals, because we were excluding casuals, so we have, we have to redo that. I mean, it hasn't been seconded. So yeah, I'll, I'll read time. Yeah. yeah. So would we add plus casual af after meeting the threshold criteria? Yeah. Okay. Just want a clarification. Okay, so I'll make the motion to include all district staff for the recreation pass benefit policy for the VIP all access pass and the VIP golf membership, including casual labor up until their benefit threshold. Up, yeah. Yep. Seconder. Councilor Krakowka. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. So, I understand the the hesitancy uh, council has with giving themselves benefits. Um, Councillor Kalka. I'm going to put a motion on the floor that uh, the council and mayor. Sorry, I don't have the sheet right in front of me. There. Council and mayor added to the recreational pass benefit policy um, for the members of council and mayor only for rec the recreation center and golf. Seconder. Councilor Kirby, any discussion? Councilor Krakowka. Um, again, I'll take the heat for this. I think, you know, uh, I'm not trying to give myself anything. I think I think all you guys um, are just important as the district staff, and I think you guys deserve something. Whether you like, love golf, you love to weight lift, you love swimming, uh, I think, you know, that's why I asked in regards to, should this be added to our to our policy for payment? Mm -hmm. Maybe, it, you know, to me, I thought maybe it's sitting there thing, but I don't, I don't think it's wrong to add something. I mean, I know... When we talked about wages, man, let me tell you, we were all scared to give ourselves wages. Uh, I don't think you can be scared to make the decision. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, I'll hear about it tomorrow. If I was wrong, I'll hear about it tomorrow. And I, I know what, it's not passed until it comes back to a regular meeting. So I can change my opinion and my decision then. But um, I think, you know, you guys should be appreciated by the, by the residents and the taxpayers. And I mean, this is a way that they can, you know, we put a lot of time in it. I don't know how many meetings Council Kirby attends, three-hour museum meetings, two-hour <laughs> TAC meetings or whatever. I mean, Councilor Norbury, yourself as well, um, and Councilor Majinski, the same thing. I mean, the meetings you're attending and stuff, and, and, and Councilor Lehman. I mean, whether it's going to uh, Dawson or to Chatwin for, to meet with uh, West Mole or going into Fort St. John, you know, you paid 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. I think this is, I have no problem voting in favor of this motion I was going to put on the floor. I absolutely agree with you, and, and that is why I brought it forward. And, and I will definitely welcome any comment from any resident on it. Um, I stand by it 100%. Council Kirby, did you have something? You know, uh, this is this is a good thing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of, I, <laughs> um, I think we're a team. Let's, let's move forward as a team and, and be happy that we're sitting here as elected by the residents wanting to do good for our community and staff that are putting forward all the services that are making our community great. You know, they say happy wife, happy happy life. I guess happy everybody, happy community. <laughs> I don't know. It's true. Well, on board. <laughs> Councilor Majinski. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Um, Almost everybody at this table is a golfer. I just don't like the connotations that it brings, saying that we're going to get these memberships. Um, personally, I like putting the money towards the golf course just because it shows where it's going towards. I like that. Um, I, it, it is a, a lot of money for me to do that every year, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's going to good use. It's going to support something that is in this community. It's been here for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, I just have a hard time morally saying, okay, give me something. Mm -hmm. for free like I just I, I almost prefer just having a discount of some sort and, and same with the district staff and that's 
kind of where I was at is like having something as a, as a discount as a percentage instead of like here you go a free handout mm -hmm. just that's just a personal thing for me is it's hard hard for me to say okay here I'll take it but because of public perception that and um, these are act I, and and a lot of it comes down to I moved here for these recreation opportunities like that's why I'm here is to enjoy these things and we have a, a very good golf course like I've been to ones all over and mm -hmm. I could care less to go to them I could I don't want to spend a hundred dollars a round Mm -hmm. I can pay six hundred here and play as much as I want, mm -hmm. six fifty or whatever, right? So, for me, I, I just feel like the money spent here is well worth it, and you know, it's it's tough, you know, just to say, I'll take it in. But did you move here to become a counselor? No, no, hundred <laughs> percent. No, I, I did have agendas on what I'd like to do in a community. I want sure. to make a difference for sure. Sure. Um, I just don't think me taking on a golf membership is going to so it's it's my opinion that I appreciate the work that you're doing as a counselor and you should be benefited from it that's my opinion and that's pretty much the motion on the floor is why counselor Kakauka yeah you worship you, you already hit it there and I'm, I mean it's gonna state it again I think you know I'm not a big person in devoting into things that'll be a gain for me, and this is, you know, obviously I could gain from it if I golf or if I use a swimming pool. But, you know, I, I think it's one we should maybe stay physically fit. I'm not saying you, but for me, um, and I think, you know, uh, I don't, I don't think it'd be an issue from taxpayers or our residents. I mean, you'll vote any way you feel, and that's fine. But I honestly think that for us to see us get this use is 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 very minimal compared to what you see other councillors, other paid or whatever. Communities are size too, right? And you know, I think we have the love for this community. I think that's why people sit on on council or decide to run for council. I mean, uh, I'm not trying to change it, but I think you know, I know it's hard to, the perception of, of residents. But tonight, tonight's just to bring it forward to the next meeting. So, I mean, I I, I throw it out there. I mean, I, I mean, if if I'm wrong, I'll hear about it tomorrow. I'll, I mean, my phone hasn't gone off yet, so. Uh, but you'll hear about it. Like I mean, this is only going forward to the next meeting, and you know, things can be changed at that meeting. That. Well, the whole town goes into an uproar that we're doing this for ourselves. Well, maybe I'll vote differently next at the next meeting, and, and same with staff. But I think you know the dedication that you guys all have here. I don't think. I mean, even if I wasn't on council, if I was sitting in the gallery tonight and heard the same thing, I wouldn't even hesitate as a resident to, to see what you guys were getting. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't run council for money either. Mm -hmm. I don't sit on here to be paid. I don't don't think any of us do. But it's what we've all given, and I think it's I think it's it's pretty minor. I agree. Councillor Norbury. You know, and um, I'd like to bring up something that Councillor Kakalka mentioned earlier, and then, you know, I've, I've known this as well. Like, the, the facilities are there. We're paying for them. It doesn't matter if we have zero people or 200 people in there over the course of a week. It still costs the same. I mean, yeah, maintenance might go up a little bit, but, you know, when you're, when you're, it's, it's not going to cost us anymore if, um, if we get staff in. But, so the 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 cons are very little, but the pros in terms of health and wellness and hap and general um, you know appreciation and, and happiness, I think outweigh the uh, the cons of a, a small amount of potential maintenance increase. I agree, Councilor Kalka. Thanks. Just one little last comment, Council or Council Norbury kind of started talking about the, the cost. I mean, I'm at, like, so if this was the past thing, go forward to the next council meeting, gets passed there. Um, next year at our budget, we'll actually see if we did damage in regards to uh, what the golf course made and, and so on. So we'll be able to see that you know, the golf course stayed the same or the golf course dropped a whole bunch of man we were wrong. You can, you can change it again there if you decide to, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think, you know, it really gives us a chance and then you can always change it next year again. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. Councilor Lee. Yeah, first off, I'm past the age of worrying about public perception. So <laughs> whatever happens, happens. But... I guess we have the option if <laughs> I'm like <laughs> Councillor Majinski. If if I want to pay for my membership, I still have the option to pay for it. Sure. So that's always out there. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Any other discussion? Call the question on the floor. All in favor? <clears throat> Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay. Um, discussion item 8.1, volunteer appreciation, council discussion, 
Background information includes staff report. Came to council February 5th. Discussion. Councilor Norbury. All right, so, you know, read, reading these reports and um, big glaring thing to me is 77% um, of our volunteer, of people surveyed volunteered in Tumblr Ridge. And um, the options that were given for appreciation, um, half, not even half, would like an informal barbecue only, a quarter would like a gala, 18% want a letter, would like a letter of certificate, and 16% didn't specify. Um, you know, I would like to see a way that, um, you know, we can celebrate our volunteers because so much done in this community, I think everyone at this table volunteers some way or another, including staff. And um, I would just like to really find a way that we can show our volunteers how much we truly appreciate them because they're the lifeblood of our community. And, um, you know, it sounds, you know, I've always been sort of pushing that, that gala, and it sounds like a, a lot of people aren't into it. Um, fair enough. But I'm not content being only, ha only half of our volunteers are happy with an with informal barbecue. I like the idea of the, um, the Volunteer Appreciation Week. I'd like to see... Um, a little more opportunity there in terms of expanding um, how we show our appreciation and um, yeah I mean yeah let's, let's get it going what, I, what can we do what I can we do I completely agree with you um, there there needs to be a better way of showing our appreciation to our volunteers I have a few ideas on this that uh, that I'll bring forward um, uh, later on, after some more discussion here, Councilor Krakalka, then Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Worship. Yeah, I, I kind of feel, Councilor Norbury, like I know we, we talked about this last, in the last term in regards to what to do, too. My thing with, uh, I'm still all about doing a gala or something. I, I'm sorry, I mean, I, I, I read this, the numbers, that was only 80 people that responded. People are surveyed out, whatever you want to call it. Um, my thing is, is you know, I, I mentioned it last, last year as well. To me, I'm more into a gala. Like, I mean, it, it's. I mean, they are the blood of this community. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can see now that some 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 organizations are having that volunteer, mm -hmm. looking for more, or trying to keep the ones they have, and you know, it's a big commitment. And my thing is, is you know, whether it's the gala or whatever, and whatever is decided by council and the direction given. But we can also look for like a ambassador of our community. I've seen it done in other communities. Ambassador, of, uh, I'll use Lacombe for one. They give out license plates, but they do it at a, at, a, at a formal gala or whatever. But, you know, to me, when you get that ambassador license plate, it, it means a lot to that individual. And to me, as a resident, you see see something like that, it's it's identical because it's on a license plate. So you, you're going to grab this parking stall and you see this person, you probably take a different one and let them have the closest one because, you know, they, they, they're an ambassador of the community. So, you know, whether it's something like that or I think um, the mayor there we were talking today, you know, citizen of the year, like... I just think there needs to be more recognition for the volunteers that like they're the blood and sweat of this community. Absolutely. For all the stuff like uh, uh, Mr. Tory there, I mean, I don't think there's an organization he does not sit on beside council. Mm -hmm. I honestly can't believe Mr. Tory. Like he's on everything. I'm anything I partake in, he's on that committee. Mm -hmm. Like you know, so I mean, there's one gentleman that's you know all out there on everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think we need to do more than a, a burger. And the problem I have with the barbecue and, and not towards staff whatsoever, but it's anybody can come for a burger. Like it's open to the whole community, but not everybody volunteers. Yep. So that is my concern with, with just doing it that way. I'm not saying not to do a nice burger thing downtown during volunteer week. Mm -hmm. Open it up to the whole community, but you should also go to the organizations, the Lions Club, Mountain Bikes, Mountain Bike Association. Um, TR days. I mean, all of them, and, and put out a formal letter and get numbers that who wanted to attend. Mm -hmm. Oregon Mountain Society, uh, Geo Park. Yeah, and I like think museum board. I see how many. I mean, that'll give you a number. How many people are going to attend? And, you know, we say that there's forty three percent said they're they'd rather do a barbecue only. But to me, if you sent those letters out and see how many people want to come in, and all of a sudden, two hundred letters you sent out, you get one hundred and eighty people that want to attend it. I think that speaks for itself. Too. And I understand your your idea of the gala, and, and you want to make a big deal of of our volunteers and and i can understand why some of our volunteers wouldn't want that kind of recognition or or wouldn't or wouldn't feel comfortable in that kind of a setting and and i can completely understand that um but there are other ways like 
um, that we can show our appreciation. Uh, and I'd like to see, um, you know, the ambassador idea is a great idea. Um, I'd like to see some kind of a nomination at town hall here for anything like ex excellent community service or, or customer service or um, you know uh, your neighbor shoveled your driveway out while you were gone nominate him for recognition so that's kind of how I'd like to see more appreciation done to our volunteers is through more things like the ambassador like lifetime achievements like um, volunteer recognition um, having a barbecue I don't think is, is um, enough Council Kirby thank you Mayor Bertrand yeah you touched on a couple of things there um, yeah we're trying to figure out the best way to to show our, appreci our appreciation to our volunteers it's, it's a tough one because if you ask a volunteer they're volunteering because they want to they don't want to be recognized but yet they do so much um, also like business like, like a small business awards, like business of the year, citizen of the year, volunteer of the year. It could be something that we we try to develop and try to. I, I like the idea of a, of a gathering, a, a gala, or 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 what have you. I know we kind of discussed a little bit of that at the chamber AGM on on what how could the chamber play a role in that, or you know, just on different, you know, instead of you know, the district doing it. I don't know. I think it's I think it's something we got to look at again. I think it needs to. I think. I think it's a it's it's a great event that would be fun, and then again it it boosts community spirit and and putting some of that back onto the groups is that let the groups decide who's their volunteer of the year. Come up, you know, come up with with the winner. I mean, what does the what does the district's role in that? Do we do citizen of the year, ambassador of the year? But yeah, I think I, I think there's two sides to this yeah. for sure, and and you know by having that nonprofit meeting before our let's talk on Wednesday is really going to give us the opportunity to get organized with our nonprofit groups too and have that um, that opportunity to to communicate back and forth so that that definitely could come from that as well is is to organize those nonprofits to to choose somebody from their organization to have that recognition um, this is this is all of these ideas are gonna are, are going to play a role in that too, I think, and and it really comes down to us looking at the policy to to narrow it down what exactly we want to do, Councilor Kirkalka. So, like I know, like, you know, we talked about Cal, and I'm not sure what everybody's opinion of Cal is, and we all probably have a different opinion of that. But I mean, you can even look at a wine and cheese night, you know, just keep it nice and nice and formal or whatever, and you know, some some awards can be presented there through the, mm -hmm. through the mayor and and that. Mm -hmm. But when you talk to me like business of the year and stuff like that, I would hope the chamber would you know, mm -hmm. take that on. Like that, I think that's you know like that's where it's done in other communities. And I, I know the chambers had some 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 tough goes here in the last couple of years. But I mean, you know, Council Kirby mentioned that they had an AGM and some people stepped up. So you know, I know there's a deadline or, or time sensitive. I guess if it's April, I mean we're in March. Mm -hmm. Uh, pretty hard to change to me um, to try to get staff to react to change something this year. But, mm -hmm. You know, I, I definitely think it needs to be looked at. I mean, I don't think a volunteer wants to be patted on the back or recognized or anything like that. I think we volunteer, or people volunteer because they want to volunteer, like Council Kirby said. But I think we need to recognize that. I think that was one of the down focuses of the community is they didn't think they were being appreciated enough. And nope. that's what you've heard, right? Yep. You kind of hear that rumbling. And I think, you know, if we do like some kind of gal, whether we strike up a committee, know whether it's a council committee or whatever and just come up with some ideas and bring it back to council and get more insight and get some ideas put on paper you know for next year's concept i mean i think this year we're going to be a little tight to do it during volunteer week yes maybe it's done early in the, early in the fall i don't know but yeah i definitely think you know myself i'd like to recognize there's some people in town that oh there's, there's a lot of people in town week. and and i agree with you that um volunteers aren't expecting to be thank you but when it comes it's like a breath of fresh air and and realistically like our groups are stretched thin on volunteers they're having a hard time recruiting and and that's part of the problem is they haven't really been recognized by us enough councillor norbert yeah and i think i mean i do like the an additional um thank you to our volunteers you know like right now we're just talking um it's currently once a year why don't we have something why don't we have a buy a twice a year thing you know we can do barbecue in the summer you know a um uh, an evening 
um, event down down in the fall or even uh, early winter time and you know because we don't have to pick this or that we can do both and it's just another way to thank you or to our volunteers and I know staff does a, a great job in their little thank you baskets to um, to the volunteers um, you know cited in in the other report is in the report is you know, some volunteers would like a, a thank you letter certificate so maybe something a little more personalized in there as well a little personalized um, thank you and we can put that on our organizations that have volunteers to put those name forward and so that we can individually thank them and just a you know, letter inside their thank you package or whatever. well I mean there is it's not like we we need to do a banquet or a, a barbecue one day and call it good we have an entire week here national volunteer week that we could do day after day presentations to our incredible volunteers so I, I'm not too keen on having maybe two functions of the year I think we have a week set out here April 15th to 21st that we could um, like I think we're, we're speaking about this year a little late like I think we need to go ahead with the events plan for for this year but I think we need to put some more thought into this volunteer week to to really show some recognition to our volunteers Councillor Majinski thank you Mayor Bertrand uh, right here it says 80% only want to be recognized once a year so that's what I find where I why it's so hot these volunteers are busy they have families they got things going on they got jobs so they and that's probably why they don't want an informal barbecue or they don't want a gala because they're already stretched to the max like they don't have a lot of time they can't 100 percent commit right away but throughout the week maybe it might be a good option for them so they can just slip in whatever absolutely but not a gala but maybe even just um a buffet style uh, dinner get to get together but just have it as a mingle uh, amongst all user groups so that they're not sitting with everybody from WMS is in one spot and the geopark is one spot or mm. vice versa right have uh, everybody collab together and then maybe and that and then you might get more tor Mr. Tories out there where they're going to jump in and fill in some gaps and say oh I, that kind of interests me and then yeah. so there's a, just a more camaraderie between user groups and absolutely there might be a little bit across uh, like the ATB club or um, you know TR Ridge Riders. Well, or whatever, and that, right? so that's part of the motivation to have this nonprofit meeting too, is to get that collaboration going with everybody, right? Um, so I see in the recommendation here that we're possibly budgeting seventy five hundred to host activities during that week. So, um, well, let's let's start with the recommendation here. I'll recommend that council hosts an informal volunteer appreciation event in April twenty eighteen. Should be 2019, is that correct? Uh, Worship, this is a, an old staff report. Staff report 18. Okay. So we don't need to make this recommendations no. today. This is just oh, okay. Gotcha. So you guys could pick up, because this is where count, count I think, <coughs> excuse me, but council had this same discussion, mm -hmm. I think, last year and um, ended up with the 7,500 to go with the barbecue. And so this was just the same information that they had there. Okay. So in that 7,500 budget, what yep. does that include? That's the normal event that we do. With the, the barbecue, barbecue and the a few gift baskets and Okay. Okay. Councillor Kokelka. I'm just wondering, your worship, is it is it worth striking up a committee of council or something like that? Like you know, I mean I don't want to burden staff with a whole bunch of, of you know, just ideas and you know, whether it can come back like through staff in a report where it's you know, I mean can't have more than three people on it, but you know, just some ideas instead of barbarian staff, and then maybe staff can look through some of the ideas, and we can, after that comes through, maybe we can direct staff to come back and report, so we're not getting four or five different reports for the same idea. Mm -hmm. Like I know yeah. you had some, I know Council Kirby had some, you know, I mean every council does. I mean, yeah. You know, I mentioned this last year. I just think you know, I understand the survey and what it said. But maybe there's something that we can mingle in there. And you mentioned, I mean, buffet dinner, wine and cheese. Maybe you know, it doesn't have to be a formal sit down dinner. Mm -hmm. Mingle with, you know, that way, like you said, groups aren't all sitting together. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, I just don't want to barbar on staff with a report after report after report, and we, no clear direction from us or from myself, and then we have to send it back for another report. I, and I think everybody is in agreement that we need to find a better way to to show our appreciation to volunteers too. Um, I think that's a great idea to have a small uh, volunteer appreciation committee 
to come up with recommendations to adopt into a, a new policy. Well, I guess it would be the, it, would it be a new policy or would it be a new, or an add-on to an existing new policy? Okay. Councilor Krakowka. Yeah, and I guess, like, I mean, I'd, I'd like to sit on that, but it's not about coming up with it. I think, you know, it's coming up as a group with, you know, four or five different ideas and then bring that back to council. You know, have them look through with the, you know, maybe the five different trigger points. You know, pick one or two and have a report come back for staff. Because I don't think it's, you know, I definitely don't want to do, do staff's job. Um, I don't think they want me doing their job. <laughs> I'm going to hand slap more, more than once. But I just think if, instead of putting a whole bunch of different ideas and then coming back with a bunch of reports. Mm -hmm. and, it needs to be clear. Together and, you know, made, you know, a few items, you know, handed off to Mr. Wall for him to put it on into an agenda and then another discussion at a, yeah. a strategic planning meeting. No, I completely agree. So... In order to create a committee, would I need a motion to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion that we create a volunteer appreciation committee um, with through Mr. Wall. I'm just going to correct myself. You don't need a motion to create a committee. If you're just going to, um, if you want to get terms of reference drafted up and everything like that, and I, I don't know if you guys are looking for something that formal, but if not, you can just appoint three people and tell them to kind of go. <laughs> okay, that's even better. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe we need terms of reference for this. Okay, so who would be interested in sitting on this? We can only have three, so. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, Councillor Lehman, Councillor Majinski, and Councillor Krakowka. Council Majinski. It doesn't have to be just three, or why can't, couldn't uh, all of council or have alternates in there? Because uh, what, what's what's the uh, stipulation of quorum? More than three, we'd have we could. And it's a council meeting, and you're going to need public notice and agendas, recorded minute recording, and all. It's that all stuff. about legalities. Quorum. Yeah. Quorum. Yeah. yeah. Council Kirby. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Um, just just another conversation, just to bring forward to the to the committee that we had at the chamber just we, we we talked about volunteering in general and the lack of volunteers out there and i think one thing we 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 talked on was you know we have mass registration for all our sporting um groups that maybe a mass registration but a mass for volunteering and all the uh, and all our non-profit groups so that you know it could be in the community center and talking about it could have wine and cheese but just so group people can come out get to know what there is out there to volunteer to volunteer at so that would have been you know you know i might not sit in, there's on the committee but those are some of the things that that we had talked about and and that's just and it's motivating again our volunteer because we're missing all of the volunteers seem to be at a certain age right now and we need to get the younger people up and at them and and uh and and getting out there. that's a great idea and and you know that's something that we could incorporate into our nonprofit meeting before let's talk as well exactly not probably not this one obviously <laughs> but um that's really the whole idea of getting that group of nonprofits together now maybe for our second meeting we can advertise volunteers to come out <laughs> and and see who all we have and and see what interests them it's a perfect forum for that thank you for that councillor norbury yeah i i totally agree councillor kirby i mean you know there's there are people that i've, I've been asked directly is there a place that uh where can i volunteer i'm like well, what do you like? Yeah. And yeah. go and, you know, they like gave me a couple of things. But maybe you should go talk to these people, you know, like, um, and it would be because there are people that want to volunteer. They just don't know where to go. And, um, you know, we need to try and find ways to recruit new volunteers, not just stretch our existing volunteers. Either. Yeah, completely agree. Um, something that I wanted to discuss with council as well is, um, there's a couple of awards uh, that we need to decide where we want to present them. Um, one is to uh, former councillor, uh, Mr. Kaisley, um, and number two is for um, former Mayor McPherson. Um, the, the question has been asked if we want to present these awards at the Let's Talk meeting, or do we want to present them at the next council meeting. 
Council Krakowka. Yeah, I'll speak to that. I'd like to see it done at a council meeting. One, it's it's taped for people that cannot make it. And I think more people will be able to see that. I think it's very important. Um, we did a small thing for, for Councillor Casey. I mean, he's a lot of dedication in this community of Tumba Ridge. And I think, it, you know, respect is people about to view it on, on camera if, if they can't get in here in public, uh, including his family and stuff. And, and I think the same thing goes for uh, for uh, Mr. McPherson, the same concept. Like, I think, you know, it, it's on tape and, you know, they can keep it or whatever. I think it's this is a much better place. But that's my opinion. Okay. Councilor Kirby. Um, just on those two awards, um, Mayor Bertrand, what 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 are we considering long? Is it a long term achievement award, or is it is there a certain? Well, the 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 award to Mr. Kaisley is definitely a long time achievement okay. award. Um, he has been awarded the key to the city, okay. so we need to present that to him. Uh, and Mr. McPherson. Um, he is his service award for being on council and um, sitting as mayor as well. Can I ask just what the what the length of that? I was just wondering because I'm not sure how long um, Rob Mackay sat, but he he said he he had he was a long running councillor. I just want to know what the terms are for for long. So as far as I understand, um, like the 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 previous councillors have already received their service awards, okay. but we could um, ask them to bring them back and present them on camera again. Yeah, I'm just not sure what the length of the service is. There's, there's a policy that states what you get depending on how long you're not. I was actually incorrect. Councillor, former Councillor Mackay has not received his. Oh. Also, Councillor Scott has received hers. Um, but we can talk to her and see if she wants to come in. It depends on, on what Council wants to do here. Mm -hmm. Councillor Krakowka. So, yeah, just on and I thought the same thing, but I mean, I don't understand. I don't think it's ever been done in the past for people that have, that have been on, on council for a long term. So, uh, I was going to call him here, right? Mr. White and, and Mr. Wren. I mean, I think, you know, to me, Mr. Case is a little bit different. It was something that we did last year, and it was a motion done through council um, to give him a key to the town. Mm -hmm. I think his is a little different than just the long service awards for the amount of years you've been on council. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if we're going to do that, I mean, I think we missed people in the previous years too, and we look bad doing it. You know, whether it's it's Councillor Scott or sorry, Miss Scott. And, you know, I think I'm more in favor of, of Mr. Casey's for for what the award is, um, compared to just a long service award. I mean, I know myself. If I decide not to run the council, <coughs> I'm sure I wouldn't want to receive an award from council today. Well, that's but part of that's part of the appreciation factor too. Like. I, I wouldn't be opposed to inviting um, the previous councillors in and um, presenting them with their service awards. And then after that is completed, I think uh, Mr. Kaisley takes the floor uh, on his award for sure. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I think that also adds to the appreciation of the time that they put in. Um, I know all three of those councillors um, put their heart and soul into that position and, and work their butt off for it. Um, I think they should deserve, or I, th I do think they deserve um, appreciation from the next council publicly, instead of just them coming into town hall and, and um, here to pick up my award. Uh, that's kind of a slap in the face for the time put in, in my opinion. Councilor Majinski. Thank you, Mayor Bertrand. Can we do an announcement at the last talk just saying that we are going to do a uh, presentation during a council meeting just so that we can maybe get some more people and informed so that because that'll give us a bit of time as well for them to let everybody else know. Sure, absolutely. And, and so are we in consensus that we want to do this on tape at a council meeting then? Yes. Okay. So if we can add that to is March 18th. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, is that the next meeting after? Meeting after? I will. March 18th. So do it in April. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Should, if we're gonna do it, should come from the I agree. <laughs> okay. Um, that's all I really had to bring up on those ones. Is there any more discussion on volunteer appreciation? I think that committee, should we set a timeline for that committee maybe? Month? Let me get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Good answer. I think a month. Good answer. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? Okay. Moving on. Question answer period. Any questions from the press? Okay. Good to see you again. By the way, uh, um, Councillor Krakowka. So just just one thing on that on that committee that we're kind of striking up. I mean, not that we want to use staff time, but if if, if Mr. Wall, if I can talk to you later, maybe just to be able to access um, one of your employees that, that I've been doing it. Just so we can get some intel information. Okay. If that's okay. If, yeah. You know, not looking for staff time there, but just, you know, if we need some input and if it's whether it's uh, your. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. A move to adjourn. Recommendation, please. Council Krakowka. Is that the Monday, March 11, 2019? Policy price meeting adjourned. Seconder. Council Kirby. All in favor? Holy cow, there's hands everywhere. <laughs>